today I'll be talking to you about uh, one of our strategies. We have multiple strategies, but one of our strategies that we call the Vulture Gap Strategy. And um, like he said earlier, who we are, we are not former Wall Street uh, executives of Wall Street gurus. Uh, we are not former stockbrokers, market makers, stock analysts, floor traders. Uh, we don't hold any certifications or designations uh, as far as the market is concerned. We are just regular people like you who trade the market. Okay. Uh, but before I get started, uh, I want to show you the screen right here, which says, which says, uh, "Tell me, and I forget." Teach me, I may remember, but if you involve me, I learn. And this is by Benjamin Franklin. So today I want to kind of get you guys a little bit involved in this strategy with the hopes that uh, you guys can take something away uh, with it. So the first step is if you can indulge me for a second, uh, take out a pen and paper. I'll give you about like 10 to 20 seconds to go ahead and do that. Uh, take out a pen and paper, and I want you guys to actually participate in this by writing this down. Okay? And the first question that I'm going to ask you guys is this. Um, if you were to place a trade, what is the minimum profit that you look for, minimum profit that you look for in that trade? Please write that down. Okay. Now here's the second question. How long are you willing to hold on to that trade for? What is the maximum duration for holding that position? For that minimum trade that you're expecting to make. And here's the reason why I asked that question. Because like in anything that we do, you need to have a plan. Okay. When I first started trading the market, uh, my goal was to just make money. And uh, it was very vague. And for that reason, um, I didn't know when to take profits off the table. I didn't know when my goals were met. I didn't know when to leave uh, the trade to keep on working itself out. I didn't know any of that stuff. All right. And so with this trade, you guys to look at it and say, look, if this strategy can meet that expectation, then it's something you definitely want to look more into. And if it's not something that meets your expectation, then, you know, of course, you don't have to go with it. But I do hope that what I show you guys today will be something that definitely meets your expectations. Okay? So with that being said, now know what is the minimum profit we expect per trade and be realistic, um, as well as how long we plan on holding this trade for. So. Let's go ahead and get started. So I told you guys I was going to get you guys involved. So here's what we want to do. If you were looking at this chart right now, it doesn't matter, um, you know, what time frame it is. It doesn't matter what the company is. If you were just looking at this chart right now, would you be interested in buying the stock? Would you be interested in selling the stock? Or would you say, I don't want to do anything at all? Okay. I want you guys to write that down. All right, think about this because when you are trading, this is kind of like what you have to deal with. If you guys can see my cursor right here, you see this very last candle right here is today. Let's just assume that this is today, okay? What would happen tomorrow? And that is what we mean by the right side of the chart, okay, and why we came up with the name right side trading because we have to anticipate what is going to happen the next day, what has not been taken place yet on the right hand, uh, right side of the chart, all right? So if you're looking at this chart, what would you do? Would you go long? Would you go short? Would you stay out of the market, all right? Now, let's go to the next day. All right, all of you guys who are still going long or who plan on going long, are you still going long or are you getting out? And all of you guys who are planning on going short, are you still staying short or are you changing your minds? For those of you guys who decided to stay out of it, are you interested in getting in now? And if so, what would you do? Would you go up or would you go down? Okay? Because this is what we have to deal with every single day. All right. Now, what about now? How many people are still in going long? How many of those people who are short in are still in there? How many of you got out too early? How many of you guys are still sitting on the sidelines waiting to see what would happen? All right. What about now? Okay, this is a decision that we have to make. Are we taking our profits? Are we getting in? Are we getting out? Are we still sitting on the sideline? I want you guys to think about the emotions that you guys are feeling right now as I'm showing you this. Who's excited? Who's feeling like, oh, my gosh, I'm sick to my stomach. I need to get out of this. This is the reason why I never want to trade. This is the reason why trading is so risky. 
you know, think about those emotions that you guys are feeling right now. Who's like, man, I picked this right on the spot because I really understand what I'm doing, all right? Because this is kind of what you have to deal with, all right? And then how about now? Who's still interested in being involved in this stock, okay? These are emotions that you have to face. These are decisions you have to make every single day when you face the market. These are decisions I had to make every single day when I had to face the market, okay? And then we have something like this. And who's still interested in staying in this stock after seeing everything that's happened pre previously, all right? And then we have something like this, okay? Now, I show you guys that because I want you guys to see how many of you guys were really on point from beginning to end. How many of you guys got out too early? How many of you guys did not get out too early? How many of you guys took a big loss? How many of you guys gambled, okay? Trading is about having a plan. Trading is about seeing certain things and, and, and trading it according to what you see, okay? And now that the stock is beginning to go back up, how many people are still in the stock at this point? How many people are saying, okay, it's time to start shorting this stock or start getting off and jumping off board of this stock? How many people are still sitting down there scratching their head and counting their paper money, okay, because they never really participated with real money, all right? These are the different participants and different emotions that we have to deal with when we trade in real life. How many people are still interested in staying into this stock? And then how about now, okay? So I show you guys this, and I wanted you guys to participate with the hopes that you know, one, you can see what your emotions are. Uh, two, you can kind of tell, you know, whether you have a good idea for what the market is telling you or what is not. But what I'm going to show you guys today is give you some ideas of like, you know, when was the best time to get into these trades? When were the times to get out? What was this chart telling us uh, that could have made us some money instead of just sitting on the sideline? And how could we have picked the right direction? Okay. So, that being said, uh, before I go any further, I want to share this with you because this was something that really happened to me when I was learning how to trade. Albert Einstein, he said this. He said, everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Okay, And that's how I felt when I first started trading. I felt that yeah, I wasn't getting it. I, I was seeing all these people doing all these great things, and I was sitting down here and I was just like, how, why is it that I couldn't get this? Why is it that I could not be like the pros, okay? And it wasn't until I realized that, wait a second, you know, I don't have the resources and the tools that these pros have to make the decisions that they are making that I started realizing that, wait a second, maybe I shouldn't be necessarily worried about becoming this professional like the monkey that can climb the tree. Maybe where I'm supposed to be is inside this pond right here. And when I can understand my environment and the things that are available to me, how can I use that to make consistent income and have a good life, okay? And so um, seeing that really and, and realizing that really helped change my perspective on trading. I said, okay, I don't need to have all these, you know, mega information and resources and all this stuff that the, that the professionals have, but what is available to retail traders like myself, an amateur person, who has not been on Wall Street, who has not been on the floor, who has not done any of that kind of stuff before, but be able to still go into the market every day, every week, every month, and make money out of the market. So I hope that that helps you guys too as you like really think about what you start doing um, when it comes to trading. So I've heard many, many taglines like this, okay, 87% winning trades and how to get consistent results just like the pros. I don't know how many of you guys have seen that stuff like this. I mean, but I see this many, many times over and over and over. And those are the things that attracted me to trading, okay? I wanted that 87% winning trades. I wanted all that information. But the fact of the matter is when I started applying it, I always found out that there was more and more to it that I did not know. And one of the biggest things that really frustrated myself as well as my uh, business partner, Solomon, was that everything always seems to work in hindsight, okay? We took many classes, we've taken all kinds of courses and all that kind of stuff. But the one thing that always kept on getting pointed out was the fact that, hey, look at where you should have got in. You should have got in at that yellow dot right there. That's where you should have got in. And if you had got in over there, oh my gosh, look at how much money you would have made. You would have made it all the way up there. And don't get out until you get up there. But what information did we have that told us that we needed to do that? Okay. And that was the biggest frustration we had because all that stuff was shown to us in hindsight. 
or they'll say, L, get in right here where you see this third dot right here. If you shorted that stock there, oh my gosh, look at how much money you made in such, you know, such a quick amount of time. Okay. And I was like, okay, that's all good. But the problem is all of this stuff was in hindsight. So it reminded me of this, this cartoon that I saw where uh, this guy, Brother Janupa, um, he was asked to demonstrate his skills. So he takes the bow and arrow, he shoots it at a blank space on the fence. All right. Then, you know, the guy asks him, well, what are you doing? And without any embarrassment whatsoever, he said, man, it's easy. First, you shoot the arrow. Then just take your paintbrush and draw a target around it. It works. I always hit the target. And that's how I felt when I was listening to so many different people telling me stuff in hindsight. It's like, you know, anybody can shoot anything on a, on a blank wall, draw a target around it, and say, look at how perfect this one hit. So I really got frustrated with that, and hence to say, you know, um, that's one of the reasons why, you know, right side trading was more about we got to figure out how to make money on that right side of that chart, not on the left-hand side. And the last thing I'll share with you guys as far as that is concerned, the psychology of trading that kind of really changed for me was the fact that, you know, if you've ever heard of this story, the emperor's new clothes, you know, it was a, a group of guys who came to the emperor and said, you know, uh, actually it was a couple of guys came up to the emperor and they tricked him by telling him that, hey, you know, there's, there's this magical clothes that he can put on, but it's not visible to fools and ordinary people, okay? Only special people can see these things. And, um, you know, the king couldn't see it, but, you know, because he did not want to consider himself a fool or an ordinary person, um, he pretended as if he saw what they would see, okay? So he put it on, and then he started asking all his subjects, what did they think about his magical clothes? And they didn't want to act like they were fools, and they couldn't understand what uh, or see what the king saw. So they all pretended and started lying to the king and saying, yes, you know, it looks great. It looks fantastic and all that stuff. So everybody was fooling themselves, okay? And it wasn't until, you know, he started going out on a parade, and nobody would say anything for fear of, you know, maybe they're the ones who – because this then there must be something wrong with you. And that's how I felt. But it wasn't until a four year old kid came and said, Hey, wait a second, that king has no clothes on. It's not making any sense to me. That everybody started realizing that wait a second, this kid was correct. And that's how my trading really changed. It wasn't until I said, You look, you know what? All this stuff that I'm seeing, it doesn't make sense to me. And it's like if it doesn't make sense to me, why am I keep on doing this stuff? That my trading really, really changed for the better. And so my thing now is I will not trade unless I really understand what I see. And, you know, I hate to say this, but, you know, stuff like volume, Bollinger Bands, Pivot Points, Fibonacci, MACDs, ADX, BBO, all this stuff, you know, it, it sounds really great. And I hear a lot of people saying this kind of stuff. But, you know, when I applied it, and maybe it's just me, maybe it's just me. When I applied it, I just couldn't see how it was consistent enough to make consistent profits for me. In hindsight, it was always perfect. But, you know, going forward, I was, like, I was just always losing money. So if, you, if you're in the same kind of situation that I was in, I hope that this, you know, lesson today, uh, this presentation today really helps you because I just kind of came down to it and said, you know what, I don't see it. You know, I, I hear what you're saying, but when I put it into real practice, it's just not working for me. And it wasn't until then that my trading really, really changed significantly. So today I want to share with you guys what I call – the vulture gap strategy, okay? Nothing really special about it. You guys have probably even seen it before, but just never even paid attention to it. But the reason why we changed the name to vulture gap was the fact that, you know, it, it just it reminded me so much about vultures, okay? One of the first things that you see about a, a vulture is the fact that people just, like, they stay away from vultures. Vultures look ugly. And, you know, vultures would eat anything that other animals would not be even interested in eating, Okay. Um, and so, and they only come around when something is dead. And so I will show you how, you know, some of those things kind of like just lines up when I see these things on the charts that, you know, looks ugly. People don't want to, you know, nobody wants to come around it. Um, you know, everybody's just staying away from it. You have to have a very strong stomach to like stomach something like this and all that kind of stuff. All right. So let's go into the lesson for today. What are gaps? All right. Like I said, it's nothing, nothing special. I didn't, it's, not, it's not something I created, you know, myself or anything. It's been around for quite some time. The only thing was I started paying a little bit more attention to it. And a gap is basically, um, if you see these candlesticks that you see, we have these three red candles, and then we have this, this black line right here, what they call a wick or a shadow or tail, all right? And basically what it's telling us is that 
you know, at the beginning of the day, the price, the highest the price went was up here. And at the end of the day, uh, or by the end of the day, the lowest that it ever went was down here, okay? And the next day, which is this candle right here, which this candle represents, um, we show that the price went down so much further that even the highest of that high did not come back and touch the low of the previous day, okay, or the previous candle, all right? So that's basically what a gap is. Now, I know most people know what gaps are, all right? So this is a gap right here. This is a gap right there. This is a gap right here. This is a gap right there. That's a gap right here, okay? So that's what a gap is. Now, the only difference between <clears throat> all these different gaps, because even when I first started learning how to trade, trying to figure out what the differences were between all these different gaps was the fact that how do I know which one is the one that is going to end the trend or begin the trend? And once they end the trend, they're typically called exhaustion gaps, all right? And that's what a vulture gap is. Uh, the ones that begin trends, they call those breakaway gaps. So the question is, how do we know if a trade uh, gap is a breakaway gap or an exhaustion gap? You know, and literally this is basically what we discovered and uh, perfected and now trade consistently, okay? So a vulture gap. A vulture gap is basically, like I said, an exhaustion gap. Uh, and like we said, you know, um, it usually appears when everything is looking the worst, okay? In the case of this right here, um, it's been rumored that, you know, a vulture can tell when an animal is about to die. And they start circling around in the air waiting for that animal to die, okay? And when they actually see a dead animal on the street, what does most vultures do? They come out there and that's when they get excited and want to eat. Okay, so imagine you're driving on the street, you see a dead animal. What's the first thing you think about doing? You think about avoiding that. Okay, a lot of animal thinks about thinks about avoiding that dead animal, but a vulture gets excited and says, "This is time to to actually go out there and have a feast." Okay, so they come when <clears throat> nobody else wants to get it. But the thing about vultures is, if you ever seen vultures all come together, it's like, man, you just don't even want to be around it. They look scary and ugly, and that's kind of like the same thing you see when you look at this chart. I mean. So whoever bought at this top right here at $44 is probably looking at this chart and just stick to the stomach, okay? It's just like, man, this is an ugly, ugly chart, all right? When I first started learning, I would see people say, oh, no, don't get into a stock like this. I mean, this is like catching a fallen knife, okay? And one of the things that, you know, uh, we teach our students is like, you know, you have to learn to see what the market is doing. Don't think, okay? And what I mean by that is there are some words that we forbid our students to use. Uh, part of those words are the words think. Okay, I think the market is going to do this. I think this is going to happen. I think that is going to happen. We don't think about anything. We only see, okay? Uh, another word that we use is we, we forbid our students from using is the word uh, feel. You know, you, you, we don't feel anything. You know, I, some people say, oh, you just got to have a feel for the market. I, I don't know what that means. To me, that's like the emperor's uh, invisible clothing. Okay, what does that mean to feel the market, okay? It's not, quant it's not something that's quantitative, something that's tangible that I can actually see and say, okay, yeah, I can see what's really taking place. All right, so we don't allow our students to use, use the word feel, think, wish, you know, I wish the market would do this, I wish I had done that, I wish I had this, and wishing that. We don't hope, all right? We, we don't hear anything, okay? I've seen so many people say, oh, yeah, I heard so, so, so say this, and this person said that, and that person said, we, we don't hear anything, nor do we listen to anybody, okay? The only thing that we do is we look at the chart and see what the chart tells us, okay? Once we see what the chart tells us, then we need to know what it's communicating to us. So that's the other word that, I, that we do allow our students to use, is that you can use the word see, use the word know, and the last word is expect. Okay, we see, we know, we expect. Those are the only three words we allow any of our students to use because once you're able to do that, then the question is, do you see what the chart is telling you? Do you know what is communicating? And if the answer is no, you do not trade that chart. But once you know what is communicating to you, then you can expect it to do certain things. And when it's not doing what you expect it to do, it's very easy to remove your emotions and say, hey, this stock is not doing what we expect it to do, so it's time to move on. There's no wishing, there's no guessing games anymore, all right? So in this case, we see a stock that is going down, and a, an exhaustion gap or a vulture gap is basically the trend going in one direction, and you see a gap in the same direction of that trend, and that's what we see right here. So the stock has been going down, and then right here we have the stock gap down a little further. What happens after that? Shortly after that, the stock starts rising up again, all right? This is the company L. Uh, I, I'll be honest, I really don't even know what company that is. 
I, I barely know the name of companies that I trade. I know the symbols, but not necessarily their names uh, because I focus more on the symbols uh, because it doesn't really matter who they are. I just want to see what it is. So this company L, whoever they are, I can't even, I, I, I can't even tell you who it is. I think it's Lowe's if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you know, but five days later, we turned around and made a uh, profit of $257. We trade options. We don't trade stocks. I just put the stock price, uh, the stock profit up here just so you that for those of you guys who trade stocks, you can see that. But we predominantly trade options, okay? But by knowing this and knowing what to expect from it and then actually seeing what we expected it to do, we were able to capitalize on this, make 257% return in five days, all right? The other thing about a vulture gap is it signals the end of a trend. Remember I was talking about how uh, vultures, they tend to kind of know when an animal is about to die? Was well, the same thing too now with us. Whenever we see this, we know that the trend is almost about to die. So the only thing is we just have to wait until the trend actually dies and then go in and, just like a vulture, have our feast, okay? So in this case, we see the stock going down. We see this gap down right here. What happens next? The stock rallies up for a 59% profit in 10 days, okay? Same thing again. Right here, I said, you know, it's widely misunderstood and avoided, okay? A lot of people don't understand the good things about vultures, no, you know, and everybody tries to avoid a vulture. I try to avoid a vulture myself, okay? But in trading, I love it. I love when I see vultures gaps because it tells me that, you know what, this trend is about to end and is about to reverse back up again. And that's exactly what we had. Remember I was talking about, you know, predicting the end of a trend? You know, just a few months ago, everybody was screaming and hollering about how the oil prices is plummeting to zero, okay? Well, guess what? This was, you go back on the chart of USO, which is oil, you will see that that was when it actually reversed back up again, okay? So when everybody was saying stay away from oil and everybody wanted to keep on shorting and thinking, jumping in a little late, not knowing when they were supposed to get in, when they're supposed to get out, once we saw these vulture gap, we knew it was time to get back in and start making money. Now, get this. We only stayed in for six days and made 111%. This stock kept on even going higher and higher and higher, all right? But, you know, we made our 6%, I mean, 111%, walked away. That was more than enough than what we expected on our trade. We moved on. Remember, I asked you guys earlier, what is the minimum amount that you want to make in a trade and what's the longest period of time you want to hold on to that trade? Does this meet your expectation is the question you need to be answering. If the answer is yes, then you definitely owe it to yourself to learn more about it, okay? I mentioned the fact that vultures have very strong stomachs, all right? What makes other people sick, a vulture would eat, you know, to his heart's delight. And this, when you see a trade like this, or when people see trades like this, the people that, are, that feel the sickest the most with a trade like this are those who actually got in up here, okay? But I see something like this, and I just get excited, Okay, I get excited because, it's, wow, here's another vulture gap taking place, and it's time to start turning this thing around. 15 days later, this is SNDK, you know, 15 days. We don't even have to go the whole range of this trade. 15 days later, we up, made the profit that we want to make, we out of that trade, okay? So I share all that because <clears throat> this is something that we do real, in, in, in real life. This is a text message that I sent out to some of our students just so you can see, not too long ago, just last month, okay, uh, or two months ago, what, April, all right, where we show people these are trades that we do. I mean, these are live trades. You can look at the date stamps on these, and you can go back to all these trades, and you would actually see us, uh, see what actually happened. Every single one of these trades on the Vulture Gas right here all turned out to be great trades, okay. Um, EVR, all right, we're looking at these trades right here. EVR, okay, we traded that. This is what we saw. Okay, prior to it turning out to being coming what we needed it to be, what happened after that, 11 days after that, we walked away with 97% profit. TRLW, okay, saw that. Next thing you know, seven days later, walked away with 60% profit. Okay, GM, all right, we saw that. 10 days later, walked away with 34% profit. AAL, which was an airline stock. Uh, actually, we had a student that told us about these airline stocks, and it was just so funny that well, every single one of the airline stocks was literally doing the same thing, okay? We saw that, all right, 13 days later, walked away with 68% profit. DAL is another airline stock, Delta Airlines, okay? We saw that vulture gap right there, 13 days later, walked away with 129%. Guys, I'm telling you, these are things that we do literally, okay, every single time. Now, do we find trades every single day? No, okay? But when we see these things, oh, my gosh, 
we are ready to jump on them, all right? LUV, Southwest Airlines, same thing, all right? 13 days later, walked away with 34% profit. Can this make a difference in the way you trade, all right? Being patient, waiting for the right moment, being just like that vulture, just circling around, waiting for that trend to die, and then come down and scoop in and have your share. ALK, Alaska Airlines, same thing, all right? Walked away 14 days later, just in two weeks, 68% profit on our trade, okay? These are the trades that we did last month, okay? And I know I'm running out of time right now, but if we have enough time, we'll go over these. But you can go back and look at every single one of these trades. Once again, all this is date stamped. And this is just a few out of the ones that we did this, uh, for the month of May, okay? Um, but you can go back and look at all these stocks right here, and you will see exactly that within uh, three, to, three to ten days, every single one of them, you know, made a significant amount of profits for us, okay? But because we're running out of time, I know, um, I, like I said, if I have enough time, I'll go through the rest because I do have the slides. I'll just go through the rest so you guys can see exactly how it is. But what I, will, I do want to offer you guys today is this. We have a workshop where we actually talk about these vulture gaps, okay? There's a lot to it than just what I showed you guys, okay? Because you got to know which ones are going to be the good ones from the bad ones, all right? How do you know if there's a fake gap, okay? If you know anything about gaps, there's three different types of gaps, all right? Some people call it four, but it's really three. You have the breakaway gap, which is in the beginning. You have the measuring gap, which is in the middle. And you have the exhaustion gap, which is at the end, all right, which is what we call the vulture gap. The question is, how do you know which one is which, okay? How do you just, especially the middle from the last one, okay? Because the middle one, you know, most people that has always showed me this would always show you that, oh, this is the middle one after it took place. But how would you like to know that, okay, you know what, this is just a measuring gap while it is a measuring gap and not necessarily uh, a vulture gap, okay? So these are the kind of things that we talk about at our workshop so you can really, really get to know what a vulture gap is from which ones are not. In there, we will talk about not just vulture gaps, how to identify them, but we'll also talk about how you can manage your trade by getting set, okay? Setting your targets, setting your exits, um, setting your entries, all right? That is very important show you how to do that. Uh, we talk about reversal locations, okay? Um, we have over 11 different reversal locations that we see on a consistent basis on charts, all right? 11 different reversal locations. Most people don't even realize there are that many, okay? Uh, just like in real estate, you hear the word location, location, location. Well, guess what? In trading, is the same thing too, okay? That's why knowing how to read those charts is very, very important. So once we see one of these 11 reversal locations, then it helps us to make better decisions rather than just jumping in, hoping and wishing and praying and all that kind of stuff, okay? Not only that, if you see today, most of what I shared today was the gaps to the downside. We didn't talk too much about the gaps to the upside. So we'll touch on that, how to trade gaps to the upside, okay? Then once you start adding indicators to it, if you thought adding reversal locations, being able to see what's on the chart is really good enough, Wait till you start adding some of the indicators that we actually use, okay? And we have a couple of indicators that we actually use, actually about three or four indicators total. But once we start talking about these indicators and you start adding these indicators to what you do for your, for your vulture gaps, then it can keep you away from all those that are not real vulture gaps from those that are truly vulture gaps, okay? We'll talk also about magnifying your profits with options. As you saw earlier, I was showing you guys how we trade uh, options. We don't trade stocks. I show you the percentage on stocks for those who like trading stocks. But in actuality, you know, once you know what you're doing, um, you can actually just buy pure calls and pure puts. I have so many people tell me, it's like, oh, man, that is dangerous. That is risky. I said, no, it's not. Not if you know what you're doing, okay? The reason why it's dangerous and risky to a lot of people is because they don't know what they see. They don't know how to see and, and understand what the chart is communicating to them, okay? But once you're able to see it and you know what it's telling you, you know what to expect out of it, then with proper trade management and all that stuff, you can protect yourself and maximize your profit, okay? So there's no need for all these complicated strategies and options. When I first started, I, I wanted to do all that stuff, iron condors and butterflies and spreads and, you know, um, three-legged box spreads and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, I realized that, you know what, understanding how to read the chart, seeing, this, you know, seeing these strategies the way that it is and being able to capitalize on the good ones, man, I made way, way much money okay, then all those complicated, you know, um, uh, strategies that everybody talks about. And then the other thing I hear people say is, oh, well, it's not as safe as this or that. It's like we have ways to protect ourselves from all kinds of stuff, 
and just purely plain calls and puts. And you guys can do the same thing too. So we'll talk about that a little bit. We'll talk about when is the best time to find these vulture gaps. Okay, there are certain times, certain events, certain activities that take place that, that that just lets you know that wow, you know what? This is the time to start finding vulture gaps. Just like a vulture would know when, you know, if I if I if I hang around this herd of animals right here, eventually I'm gonna see one that is gonna be injured, that's gonna die, and I know that this will be the best time for me to go in and go get some of my food. Okay? And then we'll share tons and tons of examples for you guys to study from, okay? So that's kind of like what I want to offer you guys. Our workshop is really nine ninety seven. Okay, I know it's in a little price for some, but you know you will get the value from coming to this uh, workshop. So, <clears throat> last thing is we'll analyze real trades for the upcoming week. So all the trades that we've done, we actually go through it live. Okay, and we show you this stuff, and then we show you trades that we plan on putting on the following week, even up until the following month. Okay, right now I have a list of thirty four stocks on my watch list right now that I am waiting for the right moment, the right time to strike so I can go in and start making profit on these trades. Are all of them going to be trades that are going to be ready to go? No, okay? But knowing which ones are like true vulture gas from the ones that are going to fail is very, very critical. So when you know these information and you know what it's supposed to do, you know what to expect, then it, it takes away all the guessing game. It, take, it, it, it allows you to trade very, very cautiously, very, very safely, and very, very consistently, okay? So for you guys who actually end up uh, signing up uh, for this workshop, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to give you four special bonuses, okay? The Alphabet of Trading ebook, all right? I will send you the guy, I will, you guys will have access to this uh, Alphabet of Trading ebook. It's an ebook that I wrote myself based on my experience in the market, okay? And trust me, you guys will be able to learn a lot from that because, you know, like I said, I am not any, you know, professional kind of guy that, you know, did anything. I'm, I'm just a regular guy that was in the trenches learning how to trade the right way, okay? And you guys will be able to see, you know, some real-life examples that I actually share in those on things that help me become a better trader. Not only that, we'll talk about uh, the 15 amazing stock market strategies that we do have. Uh, we actually added on to that as we see and study more stuff. But for right now, you know, we have 15 that is there that we would actually, uh, you guys would be able to listen to this as an audio CD. Um, in addition to that, we'll talk about market direction video. I will give you the video that we created in our market direction, okay? This market direction video is a video that tells you how to see the direction that the market is going in. Also, we talk about tools of the trade, okay? What type of tools do you need and how to use those tools to trade more effectively? And for those of you guys who actually sign up today and only today, we will, we will give you four, uh, three more additional bonuses, okay? In addition to the first four that you get, you will also get the 15 Amazing Stock Market Strategy Part 2, real-life trading mistakes that I made and how you can avoid them, and our very favorite, uh, favorite trading strategy for consistent income, okay? So if you like the Vulture Cap strategy, wait till you see what our favorite strategy is for consistent income. All right, so that's what I'm offering you guys today. Uh, you can <clears throat> take advantage of that by going to www.rightsidetraining.com to sign up. Once you get to the home page, oh, by the way, before once you get to the home page, you'll see. But for today, here's what I'm going to do for you guys. I know I said it was $997, but if you sign up today for the first three months, you pay $297, okay? That's $100 a month for the first three months, all right? So if you can't afford the $997, you can do it for $297 every single, uh, for three months. If you can't do that, you want to pay $147 for a monthly membership, we will get that to you also, okay? Um, this is what I was trying to show you right here. If you go to the website, um, you will see um, right here, just go to www.rightsidetrading.com. You come to here, you will see where it says Vulture, Gap, uh, Vulture Strategy Workshop, June 27th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., which is perfect because I know the guy that spoke before me, he's having his at one o'clock, so. You know, hopefully you guys can come from there, go to his, no problem, all right? So if you want the three-month membership, which is 297 you get that. If you want to try the, like, $149 a month, you know, you can pay that right there, okay? So, um, like I said, oh, one last thing before I do go. Um, additional gifts for signing up for the workshop. Uh, we will send you guys weekly market review. I just sent one out, like, yesterday for all our subscribers, kind of giving them an idea of where the market is. And to, 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 to date, pretty much we've been on point uh, with what the market has been doing. So that also helps you with understanding 
um, when to take good advantage of the vulture gap strategy. Okay. We'll also email you our live trades that we take personally. Okay. So as soon as we put on a trade, we'll send you guys um, uh, the trades that we've actually done. Now, when we send this trade, I have to preface this with is that we're not sending this trade so that you guys can go out there and trade it yourself. We want to send you guys this trade so that you guys can see how we're applying our strategy in real life. Okay. And there's the disclosures in there that we send with the emails for those of you guys who actually do sign up that you see how we're putting these stuff into real practice. And lastly, we would also give you a free trading plan consultation. So I urge you guys to definitely take this up because like I said, you will learn things that, um, you know, um, that I learned mistakes that I made and hopefully make sure that you just, you, you're not, you're not making those same mistakes, you know? So even if you have a trading plan, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt. It's free, you know, call us, uh, you'll be talking to Solomon, you know, he'll go through your trading plans with you just to see whether or not what you're doing is making sense or not. Uh, it doesn't hurt to do this game. So, guys, you know, once again, go to rightsidetrading.com. I know I'm running out of time. Uh, Reed, thank you so much. I don't have enough time to share about um, this story by here, but this is this is a student of mine who used to go to, who used to invest in stock just based on how many cars was in that headquarters, the headquarters of that stock. He will fly out there to the headquarters, see how many cars are in the parking lot, and see uh, whether there's enough cars or not, and that's how he bases his trading decisions. I kid you not, all right? But once he came over here, you guys can see this. And I share his story and his story only because I want you guys to see that this is a guy that came back consistently over and over, 92% on, on that uh, $910 in one day, $1,600 there. He came back, made $5,000 using the same strategy that I'm teaching you guys, you know, came back, you know, made $3,000 there. Over here, he told me, you know, he thanks me so much uh, for meeting me and God blessing me and all that stuff and God blessing him. And then over here, again, coming back again and showing that he made another 65%. Uh, so I leave you guys with that. Um, I, I've run out of my time. I do apologize for going over. Sorry that I cannot answer too many questions today. But, guys, if you have any questions, email us at info at rightsidetraining.com. Um, so our website, sign up for it, send us emails uh, at info at rightsidetrading.com, and I'll do my best to answer your questions.